We're out here in our little workshop today and we're going to show you how to take some ground up deer burger and we're going to make some jerky. Um, we use backwood seasonings. I get that from LEM products. We use that a lot for our homemaking products. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make this. This is going to be some fine teriyaki mix and uh, we always follow the manufacturer's recommendation on this. So what this called for using the ground meat versus using just regular meat, which I'll show you that another day. This is already previously ground. So we're gonna use this whole entire packet with five ounces of water. So let me go ahead and get my water mixed up. Now, when I do this type of stuff, I really like to follow manufacturer's recommendations. So I'm gonna use my little digital scale here and we're gonna put this bowl on it. We'll go ahead and get the Get the scale zeroed back out and I'm going to add exactly five ounces of water. Okay, so I've got 5.1 ounces in there, so that's going to be good. So that's the amount of water we're going to need today to mix up with this seasoning to make this turkey. So it calls for the entire packet. This has not only got the seasoning in it, but it's got a cure packet in it as well. There's your little cure packet. So we'll make sure we get all that in there. And like I said earlier, they, when you get these seasonings from LEM, they come in a variety of different flavors. And I just happened to buy this four pack. Um, each pack of this will do five pounds of meat. And like I said, we're gonna be making this today with a jerky shooter and a dehydrator. A lot of times, to be honest with you, when I make it, I'll take the deer back legs and then I'll take the roast and we'll use the jerky, we'll use the jerky board and cut those into slabs of meat. But this is, this is just one different method you can use. A lot of times if we're grinding stuff, like the front legs and anything that you might trim off of uh, the steaks or the back legs, or just even whether it be the neck meat or whatever it is, we'll grind that up and then this is just an alternate way to make jerky. Okay, so I've got this seasoning and this cure mixed up in here. See, what you want to do, I just use a fork. You could use a whisker or whatever you want, but make sure you get this all properly dissolved before we mix this in with our meat. Now, when we use the marinade style, when we actually cut it in the steaks, you've actually got to put that, they use a lot more water, but I put that in a gallon bag, and then you've got to leave that marinade in the refrigerator for at least eight hours. I normally leave it overnight, but with this, we're only using five ounces of water because we're just going to dump this all in and mix it right in the meat, which I'll show you here in a second. Okay, so that's pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead, and I'm going to grab some rubber gloves first, because even though this is home processing, we still like to be as sterile as possible. So I recommend anytime you're handling meat, that you just throw on some of these latex gloves. I got these, I think, uh, pack of them at Harbor Freight for three or four dollars. They're not very expensive. Plus the wife doesn't like it when I get meat under my fingernails. Okay, so just to show you what this is a little bit, we've already had this ground up and I had it in the refrigerator. And when I ground it, I knew we'd be making jerky out of it. So I just went ahead and had it weighed out in five pounds. Um, this is actually exactly five pounds of ground venison there's no fat added to it. Uh, you got to be careful when you're making jerky versus summer sausage or stuff like that. You really don't want any fat in with your deer meat. And I try and be very meticulous about trimming and I get all the fat out of it, as much sinew out of it as possible when I'm, before I grind it because it just grinds up easier. Now, some people might use mixers. I actually have a mixer but for just five pounds, it's just as easy to just use your hands. And following manufacturer's recommendations, you just want to mix this up until this water is dissolved and until your meat is tacky. So we're going to give this a good mixing. Get all these fine flavors mixed around. And like I said before, this batch we're making today is teriyaki. So if you take a good look at this meat, you can tell it's starting to tack up quite nicely now. It's starting to really stick together. We've got it mixed up nice. So I'd say that's a pretty good spot for us to go ahead and get the dehydrator out and get the jerky shooter out and we'll get loaded and start up with that. Okay, so now we've got our jerky shooter out and basically you could get this at any, uh, 
any sporting goods place or this or that, or you can order them out of catalog, Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's, I mean, this is pretty standard equipment. And then what all this is, is this is our plunger stick for when we load our gun. And then today we're gonna to be shooting two different kinds out. We're actually gonna be making some snack sticks like you see in the store. And then we're gonna be making some flat ones. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy out. So as the recommendations are that you load this up with wet hands and to make little balls of meat out of it. So basically all you're gonna do is just grab a whack of this, stick it down in there. The biggest thing we're trying to do with this by loading it with the plunger is to get the air pockets out. Because when we start shooting this out on the grate for the dehydrator, you don't wanna have an interruption in there with an air pocket because what an air pocket will do, it'll make your shot incomplete. So. We're gonna try and do the best we can to get the air pockets out. And just by looking at this, I'm gonna have a couple in there. I might have to start loading this up a little smaller and plunging it a little more frequently. So, okay, we got that loaded up. Now I'm gonna to have to grab, now I'm gonna to have to grab the collar. This is gonna be our collar. This collar is gonna go over the end of this like this. I mean, this, like I said, this is basically just like a big cock gun. It's getting close to the end now, so we'll get ready to shoot. And what I, why I put that on there cocked a little bit is so that my handle is not aimed straight down at my screen, so that way I can keep my screen tip down. And then as you shoot these out, you basically just like caulking along a wall or a window or what have you. And see, there was a little air pocket there. But you just shoot these out and with this being trial and error, I'm not too much sure how I even like this tip. We might just uh, we start with the round one. Yeah, because I don't like that at all. And some of these are going to shoot out a little better than the other. But if you can get it even, I would almost prefer a tip that is a single tip. And I'm sure there's people out there thinking, well... I want, that doesn't really look very good, but actually once we get this going in this dehydrator, you'd be amazed how good this stuff is. Like candy. Like candy, that's right. Teriyaki deer candy. Yeah, the only thing I can see in this product, because this is our first time using this particular apparatus as a jerky shooter, is I'm not a big fan of the dual tips. It sounds good in theory, but if one tip gets a little clogged to it, the other tip doesn't shoot, as you can see. One thing you definitely don't want to do, though, is do not overcrowd your meat on a tray. Because the whole purpose of this dehydrator is the hot air in there. You want it to be able to circulate around. So it's got to be able to circulate. Because if you can see with this dehydrator, we've got 10 trays in here. So we are absolutely not going to use all 10 of these trays with 5 pounds. So you want to make sure you leave plenty of room in between your jerky so that way you allow for maximum circulation. So we'll just take this one and go ahead and slide him in. And I always start at the top and then we work our way down and we're going to go ahead and continue to just shoot the rest of this out. Now once we get this all shot out, this is actually, it's a charred brand dehydrator that I bought at a... Uh, Rule King, actually, not real expensive, does a really, really nice job. And it's, the nice thing about it is it's got temperature guides. If you can zoom in on that and show the folks at home what our temperature guide is. It's got everything from uh, herbs to leafy greens, vegetables, fruits, meat, and fish. So obviously we're doing meat and fish. And I like to run mine about, it says 145 to 60. I typically run mine about 155 degrees. So we'll go ahead and get this thing all loaded up. And then we're going to go ahead and turn it on. And uh, typically speaking, this is going to take anywhere from 8 to 12 to 14 hours, depending on how much you like your jerky or, or your level of crispness, I, I guess you could say. And uh, when we get ready to bring this out of here, probably be tomorrow morning sometime, we'll show you our finished product. Okay, now we got her loaded up. We're going to go ahead and get this bad boy shut off. Make sure our temperature is correct by the selector. There's our sound of beauty. The dehydrator's on, and uh, we'll be back with you in a little bit. 
Okay, well we're gonna go ahead and shut this off and check our finished product. Now as you can see, we've had this on for quite a while. We left this on for about 15 hours. Now depending on how you like your jerky, uh, it could be more or it could be less. So what we're gonna do with this, we're just gonna go ahead and unload all these and load them up in a gallon bag and take them in the house. You know, the nice thing about this home processing is, is that you can just do it at your own leisure. You save some time, you save some money, and ultimately you know what you got and who did it. You know, I like to give all the praise and glory to the good Lord, and I like to thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. That's some juicy jerky.